welcome to the Comic Play Podcast. I'm of course your host, Rafi. And here with me, I'm, I'm with the fantastic David. Hello! Marina the Submariner. Hi. And the astonishing Seth. <gasps> welcome back, guys. It's been a while since I've done that. Yeah. This year, for the Comic Buffet, it's uh, all new stories, a different cast of co-hosts uh, every week, uh, bleh, every month. What? <laughs> what? And I've been saving this one for a while, because this this is Spider-Man Life Story, written by Chip Zdarsky, with art by Mark Bagley. Bagley. <laughs> this is giving the most referential, self-referential, uh, comic book that we ever do on the show, because Life Story is a story about a guy named Peter Parker. Holy shit. Got bitten by a scooter. Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, so to talk about the team real quick here, Chip Zdarsky before this was kind of known for writing comedy books, um, but he pitched this idea to Marvel of doing a miniseries where it's the Marvel Universe throughout the decades. Okay. Like everything ages in real time. Was it like through the perspective of like Spider-Man or just... No, he, he wanted to do like just like the universe in general. Oh. You know, it's kind of like a, a catch-all. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Just Spider-Man. There's no way. He, he'd make it up money. So. <laughs> They're like, just do Spider-Man. He's like, okay, I like Spider-Man. And then Mark Bagley had been drawing Spider-Man for like 12 years because he drew all of Ultimate Spider-Man from like 2000 to like 2012 or something. Do you mean, you mean to say that they said, get me pictures of Spider-Man? <laughs> they, they fucking did. They knew the guy. <laughs> they knew the guy. They called up this Bagley. Man. Get, get this bagel. <laughs> get that bagel guy in here. <laughs> so... Uh, that's like the team for this book, and yeah, the idea is that it is Spider-Man's life from the 1960s to the 2010s. Okay. And the neat thing is, Chip Zdarsky is a Spider-Man fan, so a lot of the stories in this book, like a lot of, like his, it's like an alternate history of all the stuff that's happened to Spider-Man. But he was like the same age throughout the 1960s to... Well, well yeah, but... It, <laughs> because in, in they the, don't let people grow up. Yeah, well, in the... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the most unbelievable comic book thing yeah. ever, people age, yeah. <laughs> So, when we open, Peter is not... We, we skip over Teenage Peter, because oh, okay. th there's a million stories about Peter yeah, being yeah, a teenager. Yeah, yeah. Peter's 19, uh, it's 1960s, he is in college, and he's considering helping in the Vietnam War. Wow. Yeah, that's the other thing. There's a lot that, of real-world events hmm, tied into I this. I don't... because well, he... Imagine <laughs> being... I don't, I don't associate Peter with... With war. <laughs> well, no, no, not even with war, just with Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that being... Spider-Man goes to Nam. Yeah, being like a uh, Vietnamese like rice farmer, and you see a guy in a just spider suit. Just a guy through the fucking... In the tree. Right? And you're just sitting there like, huh? Bruh. <laughs> That's kind of what it's like, because the reason Peter even thinks about that is because Iron Man is in Nam. As Iron what? Man. Iron Man's in Nam. Iron Man's in Nam, baby. Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta yeah, we gotta yeah, solve a yeah. problem. I've already seen Iron Man like an old seat, like an old TV oh. in Nam. Does he just have bare legs? Who Iron Man? Iron no, Man. they they used to just be yellow. Oh, right. okay. uh, yeah. I thought he was just no, no, no. I, I, see, I see. It's really <laughs> hot and beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, he put on his little oh, speedo. He's like toasty. Like speedo, he's it's got like... he's got he's got a breastplate. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he's got the helmet, and he's like, I got the gauntlets and the boots. Oh, the yeah, the yeah, forethought to be like, I'm gonna need some skin reveal because it's gonna be hot. But like, Slay not queen. thinking the metal's gonna get hot. Yeah. <laughs> Slay queen, Slay. Slay. One of the weirdest tan lines. Okay, so Peter's like, <laughs> Peter's like, all right, Iron Man's in, in Vietnam, and and Captain America is considering going to Nam when people like ask him about it. Yeah. So Peter is like, is it? part of my responsibility to go there because like I, I have all these powers I'm supposed to help people should I go to Vietnam and so that's something that he's thinking about Peter's <laughs> on his way to like his his college or whatever his lab partner is Gwen Stacy okay. the, his name we recognize yeah. um, while he's on the way there he meets up with Harry his friend Harry Osborn and of course Harry's father Norman Osborn mm -hmm. and Norman is like Peter I've been watching you your trajectory you know in the, in the science field no, no, no like watching you watching you it's like, this, this, this book is only six issues, so we got to really establish that I'm a creep right away. Yeah, so, yeah, I've been yeah, watching yeah, your trajectory. Yeah. And Harry's like, Dad, what about me? He's like, shut up, Harry. Um, so, <laughs> shut up, I don't like Peter. And Peter tells, Peter oh, tells Norman, because uh, Norman's like, you should uh, come work for me and my company. <laughs> Peter's like, actually, I have a... Nefarious in Corp. No. <laughs> I, have, I have an internship with Reed Richards. It's called Goblin Corp. He's gonna teach me. He's gonna teach me how to. We sell lock. trash. <laughs> I'm, gonna go re I'm gonna work for Mr. Fantastic. He's gonna teach me how to not help my friends when they turn into rock monsters. Um, yeah. Oh no! Peter goes to work and he sees the Iron Man thing. He goes by his college and he sees Harry. 
Yeah. He goes into his college and he meets up with Gwen. He's late. Uh, that's going to be a running thing here. Peter's late to everything. Um, and then he goes I feel to... Like Peter's problems could just be solved by a watch. Yeah. A lot of the time. Yeah. Well, that watch will break when the Sandman is pounding him. Is oh, right? Yeah, 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 That's true. Yeah. Flint, no. <laughs> so, uh, Peter is now on his way to Flash's going away party because Flash Thompson, who used to be his high okay. school bully, yeah. is going away to fight Nam. Mm-hmm. Ah, Nam's a really popular place. I know. It's, it's really <laughs> happening. Yeah. yeah, things are happening. Something's over going there. down over there. I'm not yeah. sure what. <laughs> And Peter, so again, <laughs> Flash bullied Peter in high school. Yeah. And Peter is like teetering on the idea of going to Vietnam. And the fact that Flash is just going to go there kind of sets Peter off in a weird way. Because he goes to the party and he's talking to Flash Thompson. He's like, hey, Flash, really glad uh, to see you, you know, going off and being a soldier. You know, it's a real upgrade, you know, from, from bullying people to shooting innocent people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jesus. Nice. Yeah, and yeah. Flash Thompson's like, what, what the okay, hell are you man. talking about, yeah. Parker? And like, <laughs> Peter, no, 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 I'm just saying, it's, you know, it's, you know, you're, you're putting all of your abusive skills to good use, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Why are you being weird about this, Peter? <laughs> <laughs> he's getting all this pent-up aggression. Sure, yeah. And everyone else is like, Peter, just be... <laughs> <laughs> really passive about people, it. people are like pulling you aside, like Peter, Peter, he might die out there. You can't just say this right? shit to him. There's like, there's like a thirty percent chance we don't see him. Peter's That's like, huge. Like, he gave me nuggies in high school. I'm not. <laughs> now you can give those other guys nuggies to death. <laughs> Swirly into an acid bath. <laughs> Frank Passel <laughs> nodding behind him. <laughs> right. This is the way. This is the way. <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> So he gives him shit, and everyone's like, Peter, why don't you go have a drink and chill out a little bit? And Peter goes over, and sitting at the bar is Norman, right? Because <laughs> even though Harry told him, even though Harry Peter, told him not to go, Norman you. was like, I'm swinging. I can go to a, a little going away party. I know Flash. Well, right. sitting there. Flash went to the school that my kid was there. I'm practically his father. <laughs> uh, everyone's fine. I've been watching him, too. <laughs> I watch a lot of Pete, Peter's problems. <laughs> I got nothing going on. I got nothing going on. I, I'm real bored. I really don't have any hobbies. <laughs> like he is the Green Goblin. Yeah. Peter doesn't know. Mm. So they're sitting at the bar together, and Norman's like, "Hey, Peter, good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, listen. Um, I know you're Spider Man." And Peter's like, "Whoa!" <laughs> and then Norman's like, "Yeah, and I'm the Green Goblin." Peter's like, "Whoa!" It's Morbin time, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> and then Norman's like. Yeah, and uh, you and I are going to go out in the alleyway and fight each other. Uh, or I'm going to set off all the bombs I hid in, in the bar. And Peter's like, whoa! What the hell? So, so he tells him, he's like, all right, I'll see you outside. And, <laughs> and Peter's just in shock, sitting there like, just, oh my god. Norman Osborne just cartwheels out, just later. <laughs> Going out for a smoke. Yeah. <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> I'll fucking kill him. What if there was some guy in the alley? Is this like the costumed like green goblin, yeah. or is it like the goblin? No, goblin? it's okay. the costume. Like, what if like he sees just like Norman changing outside, <laughs> and the other guy sitting there, just like, some hobo, like, oh, oh. And then he sees, like, a 19-year-old sitting there, like, getting into his costume, too. And no one's like, gonna be like, no one will believe you. <laughs> you think they believe Norman Osborn is the Green Goblin? I mean, he is. <laughs> but I could buy and sell you if you were worth anything. <laughs> what are you posted in a QAnon? <laughs> so, Peter goes out to the alleyway. <laughs> Post right? it on your 4chan, boys, <laughs> idiot. He goes out in the alleyway to, like, take, because he's got a sperm and under his regular clothes. Uh-huh. He goes out there. Norman's like putting on the boot. He's like, all right, oh, oh hey, oh, all right, you're gonna do this with something. He just, holy shit, Parker, we're actually gonna do this. I, you know what? I, I had my, I had my hand on the plunger already. I was gonna set off the, set off the bombs, but huh, I was giving dinner reservations. But if we're no, doing this, yeah, sorry, we're doing. No one ever takes his offer. Their fight spreads over to um, where there's like a, what was big signs? A billboard. Billboard. And Peter's Peter. like, you know what, I know he can take this. I'm just going to take the billboard and just smash him. He's going to take a really big thing? Hit a little guy. Yeah, so he smashes the billboard on top of Norman. And then, like, in the wreckage, Norman's crawling out. He's like, oh, Peter, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm very sick. <laughs> it's I'm sick like, man. <laughs> yeah, you're green. For sake, Peter. It's fucking, uh, okay. So, he, when the police show up, Peter had... Taken Norman out of the Green Goblin costume and put him back in regular clothes. And he was like, he was like, the Green Goblin attacked Norman and I saved him. You're like, oh, good job, Spider-Man. I had to undress this man. <laughs> Makes sense to me. <laughs> runs away. He had to change him. Otherwise, I had to be like, uh, Green Goblin came by and sexually assaulted Norman Osborn. 
I don't know what his motive is, but he's, uh, he's, he's, pretty he's a strange man. <laughs> the cops take uh, Norman away back to his house, and Peter's like, okay, I gotta get back to the party, because literally after the party, hey, Flash is going away. Mm-hmm. Right? Beats up an old man, goes back on the drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just puts his shirt back on, walks All back right, in. Putting this up. He's yeah. got like uh, a bruise on his cheek and flashes like, what the fuck, man? Who knew? Oh, finger guns. You wouldn't, Do you understand? You wouldn't get it. So Peter, he's on his way back to the party, and he runs into Captain America who's stopping some petty crime. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're on top of this roof, and they're talking. And, and, and Peter's like, hey, Cap, should I go to Nom? <laughs> like, what's your, what's what's your, your yeah, it's what's your perspective? Your Cap- <laughs> Captain America just broke a man's like femur in half with his shield, <laughs> and he looks over and is like, "Numb." I mean, I was in. I mean, I went to go beat up Hitler. Uh, he basically says that he's like, "I mean, sure, it's you, you like, know, it's uh, not bad for you." He's like, "Son, I just woke up from a war." <laughs> Into a new one, and this one's what dicey. I don't America, even. What if I don't know why America was completely unaware of like Vietnam? He goes, Viet what? Viet what? Viet who? What's why? What's going on over there? <laughs> I that... don't know if we're right in Nam. Mm-hmm. Like, like Germany was pretty black and white, but Vietnam is like dicey, and I don't know if we're doing the right thing. I still have to go there and check it out myself before I have like an opinion about it. The only opinions I had is I watched Apocalypse Now with that Charlie Sheen guy. Uh... <laughs> and Cap is like, I you know I'm gonna go there and check it out, but Peter, like Spider Man, you. You can stay here. Like, people still need help here, and, like, we don't know what's going on over there. He basically gives Spider-Man, like, a pat on the back and, like, a, 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 a pass, right? Yeah, good yeah. for you. Don't go. <laughs> yeah, but he, he, in different words, he reiterates the great power, great responsibility thing, and Peter's like, you're right, Cap. I do have responsibilities here. So he goes back to the police department. He's like, <laughs> he busts in, Norman Osborn is the Green Goblin. <laughs> I'm like, going on. <laughs> Now with that bit of news I dropped, now I can finally go to Nam without any baggage. <laughs> right. There's just there's just one cop just like like slowly biting into a donut. Like, what the fuck? And I was what? Like, I'm not a parent. I lied about having a son to get money. All right, bye. <laughs> what the? I lied on my tax return. <laughs> Suddenly, <laughs> truths. I haven't paid rent in like ten months. So the cops go to Osborne's house. Yeah. Like, oh hello, officers. Like, bust in. They they go into his shit. They find a secret goblin lair. He's like, oh, how did all that get there? <laughs> a secret goblin lair. They get him in the truck. <laughs> and Peter's Spider Man's watching from and like Harry's like crying and Peter's like watching from up there. I did a good. Uh huh. Spider Man goes out. You like the way I sold out your dad? Pat on the back. <laughs> he does that, and then he's like, "Okay, I really got to get back to the party." So he goes to the train station where they know Flash is gonna be leaving. He gets there, everyone's gone. He's like, "Oh no, I missed him. Oh no, I missed the train. If only I had superpowers to <laughs> keep up with the train. I'll run after him. God, Don't go, Flash. So Don't go. I love you. Okay, so he he's there. No one's there, but Gwen's there, and Gwen is like, "God damn it, Peter." You're late to everything, and, and now you, you won't even get to say bye to Flash. Like, and you were an asshole to him at the party. Like, what's wrong with you? And Gwen grabs him. <laughs> he's an asshole to me. What the fuck? Gwen's like throttling. I'm like, what's wrong with you? You, you didn't say bye to him, and, and now he's gone, and you don't know, and you're always disappearing on people, you're always late on people, and pulls the shirt enough to see the Spider Man costume. And Gwen's like, uh, uh, you. Everything makes sense. What the? Nice. God, she's 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 a really big Spider Man fan. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you're a nerd. <laughs> oh, that's your big secret. <laughs> years later, like we cut forward a little bit, like years later. So we're in the '80s, but like the early '80s. Peter is at a, uh, he's at a graveyard talking to a, a gravestone, and he's explaining how after his secret was revealed. It's like the whole first chapter was like him explaining this the story. Like the secret to Uncle Ben Rice. <laughs> after my story was revealed to Gwen, uh, she kind of understood why I was the way I was, and now we're married. And she works uh, at a lab, and I work with uh, Reed Richards, and, you know, things are okay. And uh, I didn't go off to war, but I hear that Cap's doing good work over there. And Gwen shows up. I never thought about that, but Cap would have been a numb, huh? Yeah. Hmm. So Gwen comes back to the, she shows up at the graveyard, and she's like, Peter, I knew I'd find you here. You you can't keep, like, mourning him. He would want you to move on. And we see that the gravestone is Flash Thompson's, and he Uh, died in numb. That sucks. Yeah. Meanwhile, in Nam, uh, you know, there's some soldiers who see a woman who's carrying a baby, but they're like, they're so war torn. They're like, she's got a bomb. What the? So they're going to fire, and she is defended 
by Captain America who has turned against his country. Holy crap. Ooh, War. What is it good for? Yeah. <laughs> it's only a torso. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> so it is just Captain America in fatigues. <laughs> and then and then he took his mask off. That's it. He's like, you tell Iron Man, these people are under my protection. Are we going to have a civil war, but it's numb now? Well, we got like two civil wars. We get, the civil, we get that one, we get one later. <laughs> we got a... There's a lot of war. Civil War Two Electric Blue Blue. It's nineteen seventies, baby. So uh, the the second issue is nineteen seventies. Um, Peter's working for Reed, Rich Reed Richards, and uh, he hates it. He and Reed have a lot of disagreements. By this point, the Fantastic Four has happened. You're stupid, and I can prove it mathematically. <laughs> <laughs> the Fantastic Four has happened, and then it's like, and they they retired. Like, like, within, like, 60s to oh, 70s. It's just a 10-year thing. That's yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Johnny yeah, yeah. wouldn't shut the fuck up, so everyone just left. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, uh, they're working together, Reed and, and Peter, and, like, Peter's reading the newspaper, because the, the Avengers are still in Nam. Cap is the only one, like, against it, but the rest of them are still in Nam. And there's, like, a photo of Ant-Man, like, stomping around Nam. Like, giant. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, like... <laughs> It's a reference to Watchmen, because when mm -hmm. Dr. Manhattan's in Nam, he gets really big and just walks around. <laughs> and they have this argument, because Peter... Okay, so Peter and Reed both agree that the superheroes shouldn't be in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. But where Peter is like... It's kind of unfair. Yeah, where, where Peter is like, they shouldn't be in Vietnam, they should be like trying to make peace with them and, and having a talk instead of fighting each other. Like He's against like the Civil War part of it. Reed is like, well, heroes shouldn't get involved in war at all, or any like human war affairs like that. And it's kind of like Peter is like, we should make peace of it. Reed is like, we're above it. And that's where they have like a disagreement. Because Peter's like, my whole thing is that I have powers and I protect people with those powers because that's my responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's people. I work for people. And Reed is like, I'm above people. I can, well, Reed's I can, a fucking villain. We've already established <laughs> that on the show. Yeah. I can kind of see, see that. He turns up his I'm nose. Just saying, if, yeah, I'm just saying, Let if me, I had uh... to pick between following Reed and following Doom, I'd most likely go following Doom. Doom might pay me. Yeah, Doom would pay me. <laughs> Doom would pay me and understands I'm dumb. <laughs> and he's fine with it. He's made peace yeah. with that. Yeah, he knows that like he doesn't need you. Hold but on, he, yeah, around. Yeah, but he keeps you around. Hold on, Reed would be like, I gotta uh, consult my council of reeds. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd get Reed a coffee and he'd be yeah. like, Ugh. Reed from the office, say something funny. I can mug at the camera. Good, do that. <laughs> Reed from the office. Where's my, where's my wife I'm always ignoring? <laughs> I want to ignore her harder. <laughs> I can't see it. Oh, alright. All right. So, uh, Reed is terrible. <laughs> Every time we talk about him, he's just so bad. So they're they're yeah. arguing over this, this Vietnam thing. Yeah. And then Doc Ock walks into the room, and by walk, I mean, like, you know. Oh, uh, he, is, he is still he, Octopus Man right yep, now? He, okay. he mm. used to be a villain, but now he's a, he's a good guy, and he works with Reed and Peter. Everybody just forgot all the heinous crimes he did? He's not evil anymore, Seth. He fell in love. What the, was with it Peter, with a midget this with, time? With Peter's aunt. With who? Aunt May. Wow. Oh, oh yeah. Because it's the 70s, yeah. so that we're is, referencing uh, their yeah. relationship in the 70s. That is... The ultimate fuck you to Peter. I love so, it. So, Talk Hawk walks in, he's like, gentlemen, gentlemen, stop arguing. You know, I, I had a lot of anger issues. Until, Who's the until... man with the giant shiny tentacles here? Huh? <laughs> he's like, I was very angry until I fell in love. He's like that guy. He's like, uh, until I fell in love and everything changed, you know? And they're like, oh my god, Doc, you're so annoying. Peter's like, I think I liked it more when he was trying to kill me, you know? <laughs> Please, just strangle me with all feeling these take over my body eventually. <laughs> mm. And we, we cut over to see... Uh, uh, Harry Osborne, who's visiting his dad in jail, and Norman's on the phone. He's like, "Harry, I noticed, uh, it, you know, th this this department is really slacky. We need to put more money towards this department because because Harry's running the company, but Norman's running Harry." Mm. And Harry is like, <laughs> to 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 be a Morty for a second. I don't know, Dad. I mean, I'm in charge of the company now, and it's just like you know, you, you keep giving me these instructions, and I want to help you out, but like it's my company now, and I'm in charge. Harry's yeah, you know? upset with Norman. He's getting flustered, and Norman's like, "Harry, Harry, okay, okay, okay. Listen, listen, listen." Shut I understand <laughs> you want to be in charge, right? But listen, Spider-Man ruined our lives. So you're going to do what I ask you to do, and I'm going to give you one more secret that I have held to protect you, Harry, because I'm a manipulative asshole. <laughs> Peter Parker is okay, Spider-Man. Dad! Peter Parker is Spider-Man. He ruined our lives. So dad, go. that doesn't sound real. So go back to the house, go in my goblin lair, and take my goblin stuff. Yeah, take my goblin <laughs> stuff and go goblin around town. Uh, Peter is on his way to visit Gwen at work. 
hold on, I want to show you this, because he gets a different costume every chapter, there's a little bit more armor on this one. I like that. Is it going through, like, all of his costume changes, too? No, some of them are, are new costumes, but, like, oh. yeah, sometimes you get, like, a like an old one, but, like, the idea is that because he's getting older, he needs to reinforce the suit every couple of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Peter goes to um, visit Gwen at work, and Gwen works for uh, someone that we're familiar with, uh, one Mr. Miles Warren. Miles? Who? Which might, Miles Warren? You might know him better as the Jackal! The Jackal! Oh, shit! He's back! He's backle! Jackin' it backle. up. Jackal is backle. Jackin' it up, bro. <laughs> he's still old, but in this one he's Gwen's boss. And, uh, he's not, listen, you can't get much creepier than actual Miles Warren the Jackal from the main continuity. But, like, in the 70s is when the clone stuff started. They made him even creepier. <laughs> no, he, no, here it's, like, lighter. It's, like, it's, like, realistically creepy, where, like, he's alone at work with Gwen, and Gwen's, like... Dr. Warren, I found this science thing, and he's, like, up behind her, rubbing his shoulders, and doing, great job, Gwen. Great job. You have a real future in this industry. <laughs> Stick with me, babe. Yeah. We're going places. And Peter so, shows up, and I was like, oh, Peter, hello, yeah. Mr. Yeah, tightens the, the tie. <laughs> Zip. So, Mr. Warren. <laughs> So, Mr. Warren, where's the HR? I am the HR. <laughs> <laughs> you can take your complaints to me. Due to budget cuts, I'm HR. <laughs> <laughs> it just puts on a different hat. Okay, well, I have some complaints. <laughs> HR is closed. Did you just shut an invisible door? I can't hear you. I'm not work. I'm not. I punched out like a minute ago. Yeah. yeah. So, Peter goes there. No, uh, What is it? Um, Miles Warren is like, oh, Peter, hey. Um, and this is really weird, because like, you'd think if you're like Gwen's boss and you're hitting on her, You'd think the last thing you want to do is ask her husband if he wants to work there, too. Because Warren is like, hey, if the read thing doesn't work out, you can come work here with your wife. <laughs> All these first two chapters are him just visiting people. Because the next thing he has to do, he has to go visit Harry mm -hmm. at this club. And it's been a while, and Harry's running the company, he's been busy. So Peter goes to this club, and it's, like, not his scene. He meets up with Harry's wife, uh, MJ. Mary Jane. Uh... Again, they knew each other in high school, but at this point in time, Mary Jane is, like, recently married to Harry. And it's like, you know, Peter married Gwen out of love. MJ married Nor uh, Harry because of the money. Mm. So so this guy is one of the people that doesn't like her. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's this bunch... Every, every writer has, like, a weird... <laughs> problem with like, <laughs> like Mary Jane. The problem with Spider-Man. <laughs> the problem with Spider-Man is this bitch. MJ... <laughs> And Peter's like, oh, hey, MJ, I came to talk to Harry. And she's like, oh, Harry's not talking to anyone. And Harry's passed out on the table. And uh, she's like, she, he took too many uppers and too many downers, and now he's out for, for the night. So you get to talk to me. And it's like, you're meeting <coughs> up with your friend, and he's unconscious. Yeah. And you get to talk to his, his wife, who you don't know very well. And she's, like, partying, and she's kind of loud and obnoxious. And, like, you're at a club, and you're Peter Parker, so you don't belong there. Yeah. She's like, oh, gee, Willikers. Yeah. Oh, gee, man. Oh, there's a lot of leg here. Um, so. There's a lot of leg here. So it's nervous. Like, well, there's a lot of shoulders out see, here. I can see your ankles. <laughs> he was like, okay, well, if Harry's out for the night, I'll just, I'll check on him later. You know, I'll, I'll talk to him some other time. And he goes to leave, and MJ's like, yeah, Peter, go on, leave, like you always do. Why, why, why are you doing this? And Peter's like, excuse me. <laughs> he turns back. <laughs> yeah. He looked into the windows of her soul and said, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> MJ is like, you're always leaving. You know, people go away. Like Flash went away and you were, you were just like gone for that. And, you know, MJ, I think when you could have stopped him, is the thing. You could have stopped him from going to Vietnam, which and now he's dead. Does he nobody didn't. remember that the Flash fucking tormented this guy? <laughs> he's a hero. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like everybody is treating Flash like he's like he's a hero. Yeah, well he but died, like, so you gotta be nice to him. Uh, sure, but like you don't have to tell Peter to be nice to him. Like, <laughs> I, don't know, I think all these people need therapy. <laughs> like, holy shit! Well, MJ, MJ has had a few. She's like, she's yeah. drunk and she's angry, and she's like, you could have stopped him. Like, you had the power to do it. And, and Peter's like, <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? <laughs> what? And she's like, I know you're Spider-Man. She's like, you're Sp I know you're Spider-Man. All right, we were neighbors for like four years. Of course, I know you're Spider-Man. You're man Spider. I would watch you change, oh, no. not that part. But yeah, so I'd watch you change. <laughs> Why is everyone watching me? So he's like sweating, like oh, <laughs> <my> <laughs> God. you, Norman, Reed. <laughs> I don't Doc like, Ock! I don't like Doc Ock comes over on the weekends, it's real weird! <laughs> so Peter is like, good in here. I can't argue with you because you're making a good point. Goodbye! Uh, <laughs> 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 
Goodbye. Goodbye. Smoke bomb. Yeah. So <laughs> Peter, like, run out the side. <laughs> Peter's like, I guess my, like, two-hour break is over, so I'll go back to work. <laughs> so he goes back to Reed. This is all in one night. Uh, and Reed just, is like, where have you been? You've been, young man. No, he shows up. And because of what MJ said about, like, you know, you had the power, you could have stopped Flash from dying, uh, Peter's, like, got thoughts in his head, and he's talking to Reed, and he's like, Reed, you know that the, the, those those particles you made that were, like, super resistant, and you could use them to make, like, clothing for the Fantastic Four? And Reed's like, yeah, the unstable molecules I created. Well, what about them? Peter's like, <laughs> yeah, of don't, let's not call them unstable. How about that? First of all, <laughs> yeah. first thing. Second, Reed, you ever think about, like, giving that away? <laughs> Like, think about how, like, good <laughs> the world... Free. Yeah, think about how good the world would be if all of our clothes could protect us all the time, and if we were, like, weather-resistant, and if, like, you know, one size fits all, but, like, for real. Like, just think about how maybe people could use that Peter, in war. Peter, charity. Reed is like... He turned to Isaac. Peter, they, they're, they're standing up and they're talking, and Reed is like, here's the thing, Peter. If I gave away uncivil molecules, several industries would crumble. Clothing industries, color dye companies... You know, marketing businesses. So many uh, corporations would be down. So many jobs would disappear. It would it would throw the whole world off its axis. Peter, if I had a nickel for every time someone had told me to sell my work for free, I had two nickels, <laughs> which isn't much, but it's weird that yeah. it happened twice. Why do you think Johnny isn't here anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Johnny would sell that shit. He'd be like, yeah. oh, "Come on, the money, the fame." Anyway, so it's right there. Peter's like, "Reed, you're you're talking about your technology." Like, you're not from here or something. Like, you're a person. You're a human. Some guy invented the car, and now we all drive cars. I'm not asking you to go back in time and give them the steam engine. I'm saying you are a scientist. You are, your job is to invent things. Who are you inventing them for if you're not giving them to the world? And Reed is like, Peter, no. It would just advance things too far, and, and, and people aren't ready for it. And he's like, how do you get to decide what people are ready for? Right. Because you have powers? That doesn't make you better than everyone. You know, maybe if you weren't so closed-minded about these opinions, uh, your wife wouldn't have left you for a fish man. Oh, oh, oh. Slowly, his nose is just twisting <laughs> up. And Reed, <laughs> Reed does not use his powers, but he slaps Peter in the face. Nice. And Peter is like, my spider sense picked that up the minute he thought of it, but I let him have it because I know I crossed okay. the line. Peter leaves, and his inner monologue... Who work for Pim? He doesn't slap people. <laughs> Time to tell you the oldest, uh, <laughs> the oldest secret in Hollywood, Peter. <laughs> Ant Man slaps people. Yeah, yeah, slaps the shit, especially his wife. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it'd be great to like be a superhero. Why are scientists like hello? It'd be great to be like a new superhero and you find out that Ant Man like like hit like hit his wife uh -huh. and like you don't know anything about Ant Man, so you meet Scott Lang. And you're like, hey, asshole! <laughs> <laughs> I know what you do to women. And he's like, what are you talking about? It's just, yeah, it's just Paul Rudd. What are you talking? You should be ashamed. <laughs> Oh. Scott Lang be like, Peter, I've been watching you. <laughs> no, who's the fucking weird oh, one? The irredeemable Ant-Man? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's been watching you. Yeah, he's been watching you. I've been see, sitting on your shower head. See, you go to that one, you're like, hey, I know what you do to a woman. He's like, be more specific. Because I'm a monster. So, yeah, guys. so Peter roasts his boss the and then leaves. Um, he takes a big shit on his desk and walks out. And he's like, oh, I hope Miles Warren still has that job opening because I'm not, I have no place here anymore. I'm gonna go work for a jackal. Goes back to Miles' lab. Again, Miles is like, you're doing a great job, Gwen. You're doing a great job. Oh, hey, Peter, how's it going? <laughs> and, and before Peter can ask about a job, uh, the wall explodes. Oh, hates us. It's the Black Goblin. The Black Goblin? This is a new design made for this book. That's kind of red. I like yeah. that. Because in the you know in the seventies, Harry becomes the second Green Goblin. Uh -huh. uh, I think in the late seventies or early eighties, you get the Hobgoblin, which is a completely different guy. Um, but, I don't even know where he came from. He's but they were like, and that costume's like black, and it's got like a little bit of orange in there. So this is kind of our reference to Hobgoblin, while also continuing Harry being the new Goblin. Gotcha. They just wanted a new design. It looks cool. Yeah. So uh, Harry shows up as the Black Goblin. Peter, they immediately they understand each other because he's like, I know you're Spider Man. Oh, okay, okay. He's like, I know you're Spider Man, and, and Harry's like, and by the way, Black Goblin, I'm actually Harry. Surprise! And he puts the on. Why is everyone just reeling who they are? And Peter's like. What is this about, Harry? What do you want with me? He's like, oh, it's not just about you, Peter. It's about Miles Warren. He, he, and Harry scans the room and then throws some bombs over by another door. And behind the door are three pods with clones in them. Because he's Miles Warren. He makes clones. Yeah. There's a clone of Peter, a clone of Gwen, and a clone of Norman Osborn. 
And everyone's like, what the hell? I can make you guys fight for eternity. <laughs> <laughs> and Harry is like, he's surprised. He's like, wait a minute. Why is there a Peter and a Gwen clone? You're just supposed to make my dad so we can pin all the crimes on the clone. Yeah. Thank you, Harry, for saying that out loud. Uh, otherwise, yeah. we would have not understood that. the context. <laughs> Warren just slowly tilts his head at him like, up. <laughs> Yeah, and he's like, why is there a Peter clone? And Gwen's like, yeah, why is there also a Gwen clone? Shut up, shut up. So why is there a Peter clone? And, and Harry's like, yeah, if we could, have, once this is over, if we could circle back to why is there a clone and maybe I'll be fine, that, yeah. but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit back here. Let you, you guys, guys do, do this. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. thank you for letting me be a part of this. <laughs> the pans Honestly, over. Honestly, real, so, real interested in what's about to happen. It pans over to Miles Warren. He's like halfway out the window. He sucks. <laughs> oh, okay, well, uh, well, well, I guess I'll stay for this. Harry is like, you were just supposed to make a clone of my dad. You made a clone of Peter. And he's like, and, and Miles is like, I just, I made, your dad asked for a Peter. Your dad asked for a Peter? <laughs> Wait, which dad? Clone uh, dad or my dad? Uh, <laughs> Because <laughs> if clone dad asked for it, whatever, I don't care. But if my dad asked for it, it's kind of weird. Harry is like, <laughs> Harry has a fucking breakdown. He's like, of course. Because he wanted Peter to be his son. So he wanted his what? very own Peter Parker. <laughs> Remember, it's always what you, Peter. And so Harry freaks out and fights Peter. And Peter's like, shut the fuck up. What? Uh, no, this no, is no. just as weird for me. Don't worry. <laughs> Harry, you're jumping to conclusions. He just, uh... <laughs> just uh, <laughs> I didn't need to jump on a, I'm on a glider, huh? So He glides to conclude. <laughs> God damn it. So Peter, they're fighting, and Peter is like, Harry, don't do this. Your father's, you know, your father doesn't care about you. He's already ruined so much about your life. Don't let him ruin, you know, your closest friendship with me. And, like, unlike every other universe where this doesn't work, here this works. Oh. And Harry's like, you're right, Peter, you are my friend. I love you. And he's like, I love you, Harry. <laughs> And it's like, okay, I guess it's Peter... Miles again, slowly stepping over <laughs> just like, alright. Go ahead and crying. <laughs> alright, all right, Peter, yeah. I'll take back all those bombs I planted in this building. <laughs> That's like, like, it finally it works. I guess the difference between this Peter Parker and every other version is that this one has modifiers, so his charisma role is just really good. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He's like, don't let this ruin our relationship, and Harry's like, okay, fine, I won't. Okay, Dad. But then Harry's like, I'm gonna end it all, Peter. And you're like, oh, God, what are we gonna do, Harry? I'm gonna kill the clones. Huh. <gasps> There's a bomb. Good. No. All right. And Peter's like, good. And Gwen is like, no. They're, they're people. They're still living people. Mm, are they? And Pete no? goes in to save the clones. He's too late. Bomb goes off. The, and Peter dies. The Gwen is dead. The Norman is Gwen. The, the Peter clone gets out. The Norman is dead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Peter one is alive. Yeah. And Peter's like, of course. Like, not of course he would survive because he has my powers. Of course the one that would complicate my life the most is alive. <laughs> Miles is like, Gwen, No! And everyone's like, Miles, calm down, it's just a clone. And he's like, no, you don't understand. I did so <laughs> much stuff to that clone. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so he's crying, and everyone's like, old man, get over it, it's a clone. And he's like, you don't understand, that was the real Gwen. What? 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 What do you mean? <laughs> what? Why? When Gwen started working for Miles, he made a clone of her. Mm -hmm. And then he put the original Gwen in the pod and gave the clone to Peter. So that way, eventually, you know, Peter and that Gwen will go off and do whatever, and then he'll have the real Gwen for himself. And we never get into the portion where it's like, how do you, how do you go about waking her up and being like, so here's the deal. Your husband <laughs> fell in love with, like, your clone. <laughs> That's so bad. Okay, hang on. I know you're waking up yeah. from cryos. Yeah, so, listen, uh, I, eventually I'm going to, like, I actually... He kind of, like, leans on a pod like this, like... <laughs> Listen. Like Mr. Freeze when his wife is frozen. <laughs> she, yeah, he's leaned up against it. She's like shivering, like what the fuck. He's just got a coffee cup, and he's like, "All right, babe." So yeah, <laughs> no, like, it's like I have to get to this point where I convince you to be with me. That's the hard part. But I gotta get through this stuff first. Why? Why complicate it? <laughs> just take the clone. I need yeah, the, I need the real thing. If I'm going to be a creepy oh, asshole, i got to go all the way with it. Uh, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I don't agree with your methods. I, I hate this character so much. He's so fucking gross. <laughs> so, like, fucking good job for making uh, such an yeah, actual, yeah. like, hateable character. Uh -huh. Like, that's, that's difficult. <laughs> he understands that Peter's kind of an asshole sometimes. Because when Peter yeah. realizes the real Gwen had been dead the whole time, and he's been with this clone, he's like, I can't be with you. Like, this isn't right. You're not even the real Gwen. So. Well, everything was fine before. No, you're not real. Know. You're a dirty, filthy clone. I hate you. You're from a third dimension! <laughs> so, 
we we cut to the Peter clone and the Gwen clone, or yeah, the Gwen clone, like getting in a taxi and like leaving town. Like MJ is like waving them goodbye, and Peter is in his apartment, like sobbing, like sitting there. Well, yeah. And Gwen and MJ walks in, and she's like, "Okay, the the Peter clone and the Gwen clone, they got new identities. They got like new, you know, information and stuff. They're gonna go live somewhere else. Like Harry's gone, you know." Uh, Harry, we're, I'm also done with Harry. Like, it, it's not working out with us. Right. And, and Peter's like, that's great. No, that's great. You know, that's they both get, cool. they both get new lives, right? With, with, uh, with no baggage. And, uh, you get to not be married, but also get all this, uh, money because Harry's an idiot and didn't sign a prenup. So, <laughs> you know, you, 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 everyone works Figured out. Out. What, what do I get? I get nothing. I get nothing. And this is kind of a, is, again, there's a lot of mirrors to what actually happens in Spider-Man comics. This is a mirror to the night Gwen Stacy died in the 70s. Just like at the end of the night Gwen Stacy died, just like in this book, these two moments are, like, the same. MJ has a chance of just, like, leaving this behind, just, like, leaving Peter there and, like, not dealing with any of this emotion and shit. Mm -hmm. And she, like, Peter tells her to go, and she, like, closes the door, and she stays with Peter, like, to, come like, comfort him in this moment. Like, That's cool. This is the turning point where MJ starts caring about people. Mm -hmm. So, it's the 80s, and uh, MJ is in a hospital because she's giving birth to Peter's child. She's in the room with Aunt May, but Aunt May, you know, because she's like, we always talk about Aunt May is like a fucking and mummy. She she has the doc doc. No, no the doc doc isn't there. Damn. Aunt May has dementia. All right, God. So she's always she always calls MJ Gwen, and right. when Peter's not there, she thinks that Peter's at college. Mm. Oh, that's yeah. weird. And huh, so sad. it's so it's MJ and Aunt May in this hospital room, ready for the birth of Peter's kids, and Peter isn't there. Because he's on Battle World! It's the Secret Wars! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Man, let's go! The Wolverine Beyond grocery Earth. list. <laughs> Galactus sitting in a field. I guess I'll eat the planet. Yeah! yeah. The Human Torch breaking up with an alien chick, and then Colossus walking in. I love you! <laughs> Battle World! Finally, yeah. I can tell you the truth! Oh, Don't tell my girlfriend back home! Oh, That's... Thor having an uncomfortable date off to the side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of adaptions of Spider-Man, they like to kind of cut around Secret Wars because it's complicated and involves other characters. Sometimes the symbiote just falls from the sky or his dad makes it. But like, no, here we're doing Battle World. We're doing Secret Wars. Right. Nice. Also involved in the Secret Wars is Doc Ock because he's a villain again. Because Aunt May, before she got dementia, left Doc Ock. Nice. Huh. So he's like, I'm evil again. Huh. No. Love is a lie, Peter. Oh, God, Doc. <laughs> Peter, I was your uncle for all of five years. <laughs> and in that five years, I, I think I've earned the right to give you advice. Yeah, he's gone from women are queens to women are thoughts. So, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Otto Octavius. Uh, <laughs> so Peter's on another goddamn planet, fighting in this stupid pretend battle. My kid is being born, Jesus. I need to get home. And, like, it, it, it's mostly one-to-one -one with what characters are there. Like, Reed Richards is up there, the thing is up there. Mm -hmm. Um... While they're up there, Peter's talking to Reed, and uh, time has passed, so they're a little bit like better with each other now. Mm -hmm. Peter in the 80s starts his own company called Parker Industries, which is a, an idea they'd use way later. Barker. His company makes adhesives. Barker? Makes adhesives. Adhesives. Okay. Because he sticks to things, and he has web formula, so he makes tape and command strips and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And it's like, Flex -seal. he capitalized Flex -seal. on the idea that he pitched Reed about giving away his technology, and it worked out for Peter. Now he has mm -hmm. money. And Reed is kind of, like, impressed. Like, he's still, Reed is still stuck in his ways, but he's like, you made it work. And I'm really proud of you for that. Like, they, they come around. Good job, kid. Yeah. yeah. You really stuck to it. Huh? I'm gonna smack you again, but now on the back. <laughs> so, just like in the original Raise event. his hand, Peter just... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so just like in the original event, Peter... Uh, his costume gets ripped during the fight. And so he sees Wolverine walking around and his costume's repaired. He's like, Wolverine, but then you're shopping list. How, how did your costume get repaired? And Wolverine's like, oh, there's a machine in there that repairs costumes. I'm not going to show you where it is because then if I do that, we don't get Venom, which means we don't get Rob uh, Liefeld or Todd McFarlane, which means we don't get Spawn in the amazing Spawn movie that's totally going to make money. So you're going to go in there alone and look for Wolverine, that Wolverine, what the <laughs> Wolverine, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. I'm contractually obligated to not tell you which one to get into. Go in there, get the black suit that kind of like becomes your love interest in a weird way. Uh, and then way later, it's going to work out, Eminem makes a song called Venom. So, 
<laughs> we'll make it worse though. Wolverine, what the fuck are you talking about? And he's like, don't worry about it. It's, it's more of a time. I got hit in the head and Charles is still working up there, so like I gotta <laughs> So Peter goes into this other room and uh he doesn't come out the same. And he gets venomized. We cut back Venom We cut a little bit later when Peter gets back home, right? His kids are born. Yeah, they're twins. Wow. Yeah. Shit, wow. dude. Oh, you know, it's, it's to complicate things. Spider and man. Because, I mean, <laughs> technically he has a twin. Because his clones still run around somewhere. <laughs> they predictably named the son Ben. Wow. Yeah, that, that's like the fourth Ben. Ben Parker, uh, Ben Grimm the thing, Ben Riley, which is the clone, and now Ben Parker the kid. Ben, Ben. Too many Bens. Ben. Ben Too many Bens? Ben oh, Nair. So ten. Ben Nair done that. It's hero time, Dad. So, and then the daughter, unpredictably, they name her Claire. Wow. Weird. Yeah. Mm. And him having a daughter is a thing from many different universes. And MJ, you know, she's got older kids. She's like, you know, you being gone and the kids being born, it's not the only thing that happened while you were away. He's like, what do you mean? And she's like, well, Harry came back. <laughs> he's a goblin again. No, he's, goblin he's gobbling it up over there. She's like, while the secret orders was happening, uh, Russia took notice, and it's the eighties, so uh, the Cold War got real hot. Uh, Russia launched a nuke at New York because all the heroes were gone. Who could stop it, right? In New York only. Yeah, because that's where all the, all the superheroes live. Yeah, every superhero is in New York. Yeah. <laughs> what the Russians didn't count on was oh, um, a superhero. Who was unpopular enough that the Beyonder did not choose him for the war? The Vision! This is before he had a TV show, so no one knew who the hell he was. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So Vision is like, I'll oh, stop the nuke. Yeah. He fails. Uh, he can only misdirect it to New Jersey. Like Allenstown, New Jersey. Well, you know, yeah, no New, Jersey. New Jersey. <laughs> New Jersey actually kind of deserves it. And it's me. Out of that nuke, we got Jersey Shore. Turns out we drew first blood. Um, so, so New Jersey is like. Ignore the wasteland. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's a little different. <laughs> yeah, slightly. Oh, get on the bus too. Fuck now it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the vision was so like, I'm gonna say embarrassed, but they say shocked that he uh, <laughs> he like stands uh, in the whiz, guys <laughs> stands in the wasteland of New Jersey and is just like uh, he like shuts himself off. He's just like a statue there now. Mm-hmm. And oh, that for New Jersey. Yeah. yeah. Right. So a so little, little off switch. Just... <laughs> so it's like a couple months later. Again, we're still in the '80s. And Peter is using his money and resources from Parker Industries to help clean up the radiation in New Jersey. Like, they have, like, a base there. He's working with Reed, cleaning up the radiation. And, uh, this entire time, Reed, or not Reed, Peter's been using the black costume that he gets on Battleworld. And he's talking to Reed, and Reed's like, oh, I'm so proud of you, Peter, with your company and all that that stuff. But, uh, listen. You did it, lad. I studied your suit without your permission. I was uh, watching you. (laughs) (laughs) Peter just punches him. (laughs) (laughs) Every time I get watched, my family dies. Rita's like, Rita's like, Peter, your suit is alive, and it's kind of like it's a living thing that's like feeding off your emotion. And Peter's like, Reed, we've been over this, okay? I have modifiers. Of course, I studied this thing. I'm running with that one. F modifier. This Peter is better, so he ran tests on the suit as soon as he got home. Like, I know it's oh, alive. Yeah, good job. Good and job, I, Peter. Yeah. Oh, That's why, I, oh. and he's like, I, I, I can handle the suit. Okay, I'm not a little kid anymore. I don't need your advice. I got this. Shoot, I'm a grown-ass Shoot. man. So Peter ends up going home after this. Um, and, you know, MJ's like, he gets home and the cops are leaving the house. Mm. And Peter's like, what was that about? That's weird. And MJ's like, yeah, we need to talk. Um, your, your aunt took the kids for a walk through the park in the stroller uh, and then she just stood there and looked at a department store that used to be something else. Like, she, like, zoned out. And so, you know, the cops, like, found her and brought her back home. Peter, like... We, we need to put her in a home. We need to put her in a home. Yeah. And Peter, at this point, he's like, I run a company that's basically, like, by myself. I am trying to fix New Jersey. I'm Spider-Man. I got this alien suit that I'm still kind of figuring out. Um, you know... And now my aunt has dementia. And now this. Oh, yeah. and I'm, a, I'm an absentee dad and an absentee husband. And I, you're telling me I gotta put my aunt at home. And she's like, yeah, that's what I'm telling you. And he's like, I'm not just abandoning her like that. And... I mean, you can still visit her and shit. Like. I mean, if he's not there anyway. Yeah, yeah exactly. What's <laughs> the be difference? She should be better What's in a home. Yeah, yeah. What's the difference? At least she's being taken care of. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's one stress off of MJ's back because she has to take care of the right. kids and Aunt May. Yeah. Like, I think, he, I think she points out, like, I have to dress her every day. I have to, like, bathe her every day. Like, I, when I'm not around, like, she could be hurting herself or other people. And, sure, 
Peter's like, we're not putting her in a home. Okay, that's we're not going to do that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Absolutely off the table. Now, yeah. please, can please. you clean her up? Yeah, please, please <laughs> now, continue taking care of her. What is for dinner? I'm yeah. out of here. <laughs> <laughs> what is for dinner? I am hungry. I am famished. No, that we put that, put that in the cork board. Yeah. You know? He's like, just, you know what, MJ, Uno reverse. I'm eating for two now. It's symbiote head. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Hello, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, the little venom head just pops up. I'm here too now. <laughs> um, I'm just like, what the fuck? MJ suit hungry. Come on, <laughs> chop chop. Let's get those cold nuggies. Come on, <laughs> keep coming. Half cold, half warm. He wants the cold. I want the warm ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, when earlier, right? Mm-hmm. We established that Peter's the person to run out on people, and it, we thought it was because he was Spider Man. It turns out that's just who he is. Sometimes he gets stressed out. His his flaw is that he runs out on people yeah, when he doesn't want to have conversations that are tough. In in fight or flight, he's like yeah, and oh. it's. It's nice too because throughout this book you see him that improve. Great like, copium right there. <laughs> you see him improve. Like his, <laughs> his suit improves the way he, like he you know he studies his suit when he gets it. He's like he's smarter and he's better. Like this Peter grows up so he's better at things, but that doesn't mean he's perfect. And I think sure. that's you know, no matter how old you get, you're still making mistakes. So this Peter is like, I'm going out. I'm going to get some air. MJ is like, Oh, are you going to be wearing the suit? Hmm. <laughs> Because um, she's like, that thing is always on you. Me, the suit makes me strong. Dude. And it's, MJ's like, it creeps me out. It's harder to do this now. The suit helps. And I don't wear it all the time. I know it could be an addiction. I don't wear it all the time. So, I can stop if I want to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'll do it right now. He sheds Look, the suit Iron off. Man has a performance enhancing suit. <laughs> <laughs> he takes the black suit off and he puts it in like a pod. It just sits in there. Kind of strokes the He's pod. He's like, yeah, see? Now, goodbye. And he leaves. Peter, Peter, you're acting like the jackal. <laughs> Don't you say that. <laughs> Don't you say that in my house. <laughs> Who? Not in this house. <laughs> he looks over at a picture of Gwen, puts it down. Don't you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that in front of the GWEN. <laughs> you always wonder why you're number two, MJ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Peter, what the fuck? <laughs> Reed coming out of the closet. I've been watching. This is all really messed up. Yeah, his head just through the window. Mm-hmm. Hey. <laughs> what, dude? Not cool. So, also in the 80s, and they mentioned this in this chapter... Through, like, newspapers and stuff. There's, like, a, a Spider-Man imposter running around wearing his own black costume and, like, there's shooting people. <laughs> what? <laughs> so there's, like, another Spider-Man going around shooting people. And, and Reed had said another problem with the black suit is that people think... And, and Peter is, like... He's going a bit harder on people. He's not holding back as much. And he... And Reed thinks that that influence and the black costume is inspiring this, like, messed up killer imposter that's running around. Mm. Among us mm. reference. Um, uh, yeah, what he's venting, yeah. So, Peter's swinging around and he gets shot. <laughs> oh, shit. He doesn't have the suit anymore, so he's not as good. So, he gets shot, and the imposter runs up to him, he's like, I got you. And, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and they start fighting, and Peter pulls off this dude's mask, and it's Craven the Hunter. Universe. So, was this before or after he bathed in a tank full of spiders? I'm glad you mentioned that, because it's the 80s, which means Craven's last hunt happened in the 80s, so we're referencing Craven's last hunt here. This is almost exactly what happens in that story, because Craven in order to dresses as a spider. You gotta eat the spider, eat the spider, the spider become the spider, the spider, fuck the spider. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Let's see that. Fuck around, find out. Yeah. Maybe. So, maybe. Just like in the actual story, Craven disguises himself as a black suited Spider Man. He defeats Spider Man in a fight and then buries him alive. And he's like, <laughs> and now I am Spider Man. Way before Doc Ock makes it cool. So. <laughs> No, me. You know, me am the spider. I'm also getting Sony movie. How Very am, good. How am to a spider? <laughs> so that happens. Peter's buried alive, and the symbiote, which is at home, is like bang on the glass because it knows Peter's in, in trouble. Mm-hmm. And MJ's like, uh, "What is boy? Is Peter talking about? Is talking about? And it's great. In the original Craven's Last Hunt, Peter broke out just because of the the strength of Will, and he he didn't want to die at the time. Um, <laughs> the strike the will uh, and he didn't want to die. Very so. much the uh, don't really want to die. In this, in this it kind of makes of adrenaline. In this, it makes more sense because he's down there, buried alive, and the suit comes down to give him strength. But he's like so close to death and so angry that when he bursts out of the ground, he, like in the original comic, he crawls out of the oh, ground. Oh, is he venom? When he in this, he bursts out of the ground as venom. Nice. Uh, we we see Craven again. He's 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 a black suit Spider Man. He's stopping a mugging, and he's like. <laughs> Why are you mugging? Maybe get the real job. Sorry, new to banter. So, <laughs> and these the mugger and the muggy run away, muggy. and Craven's like, muggy. "Yeah, that's right. You run away. I'm scary spider." Turns out, just holy shit! Of, yeah. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> when the first time they fought, 
Craven had said, you're not good anymore, Spider-Man. Like, you need to improve. And if you can't improve, then I'll replace you. In this fight with Peter as Venom, Craven is like, you're beautiful. You're exactly what you should be. <laughs> and Venom's like, you fuck, you crazy guy. But then, before he can kill Craven, MJ shows up. She shows up with a sonic gun. Oh. Because one of the contingencies they had was that if the suit ever, like, got out of control, MJ would use this sonic gun on it. Okay. And she's like, I'm just worried it'll kill you. And Peter's like, don't let it take me. Don't let it take me, MJ. Please, just do it. Please. So he shoots, he shoots the sonic gun. Rupture my organs right now. <laughs> the Venom suit seemingly dies. Cra Craven, like, scampers away. Like everyone does in this book. <laughs> Craven's just... Finds a window and goes through it. Yeah, everybody is always just climbing into or out of a window. <laughs> Craven runs off. The Venom suit is dead. Peter is, like, hurt on the ground. And the rest, so the, the rest of the book is without dialogue, but it's, it's drawn really well to the point where it's like, Peter yet again is alone in his apartment crying, sitting there. <laughs> because MJ is taking the kids and leaving. She's going to move to Portland. Uh, Maine? Oregon? Uh, Oregon. Okay, okay. Yeah, real far away. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pitch. So she's going to leave with the kids, and uh, there's no dialogue. They just look at each other. MJ walks up with the kids. Peter's crying again. Yep. And, and oh, God. So, <laughs> so Peter is... He's there alone. His kids are gone. His his wife is gone. But technically, Peter isn't alone because he Aunt May is still suit. Aunt May is still in the room looking out the window, watching. So, no, just like he's not alone, <laughs> but the person he's with yeah. is like not there. All right. You know. Yeah. And we also see this other bit because in Craven's Last Hunt, the the other story, that ends with him killing himself so that Spider Man doesn't get the salty run back and beats him in a fight. In this book, Craven is like naked. It's it's sun. It's like uh, sunrise. He's in his like estate. He's like, ah, this is great. <laughs> Time to kill myself. <laughs> Spider crawls out of his mouth. Uh, I don't want another, Peter. Just yeah. another day in the life of Craven the Hunter. Uh, it was oh yeah. So so Craven's alone in his house. He's like okay, time to kill himself. Um, he's got <laughs> he's got the gun, I and the gun is pulled it. away from him mm -hmm. by a black tendril. The symbiote joins with Craven. <laughs> what? <laughs> ah, that's what's... No, another symbolic death. But guys, now it's the 90s, and everyone has a cool cartoon. Right. Nice, nice. Uh, Peter is, you know, he, he's single. <laughs> he's not single, but yeah, MJ's gone. Um, crying in the apartment. Peter's, like, in his 40s, and he's running uh, Park Industries on his own. And w when this issue opens, Tony Stark is, like, in the office with Peter. And Tony's like, Peter, just sell me your company. Come on. <laughs> Come on, just some of your kids. Yeah, I'm like 80 years old at this point. Come on. <laughs> Peter's like, okay, I'll sell. Just um, stop making weapons for the government. And Tony's like, I will not you stop doing bitch. that. Yeah. <laughs> you so he's what? like, and Tony, he gets real personal because I guess the implication is that when MJ needed a place to live in Oregon, she asked Tony for money because Tony is like, he takes the picture of Peter's family. He's like, where would they be without me, huh? Oh. And Peter's like, Tony, get out of my office. I make more money than you do. My toys sell better. Oh. Get out of here. Damn. Who even and, are you, Iron Man? <laughs> and Tony's like, you'll see. You'll all see. You'll all see. That will become the most favorite Avenger. <laughs> Just you wait. Playing the long game. So also at this time, Peter has employed uh, Jessica Jones. I'm gonna... Oh, that's cool. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> to keep an eye on someone in New York for him. No. In the process of doing that, he and Jess uh, have a, a relationship. Wait, Peter Hyde... You hired somebody to watch someone else? Yeah. Oh! oh. The tables have oh. Oh. I'm the watcher now. I'm the watcher <laughs> now. <laughs> Who watches the watcher now? <laughs> I've done it. But yeah, no, he, he hires Jessica Jones. Reed's eye is still just in his window. <laughs> <laughs> the two of them form, uh, you know, a, a romantic relationship, which is kind of referenced in the main universe. So also, it's the 90s, and it's Spider-Man, so like, Clone Saga. Again. <gasps> Clones uh, this time. This time. The Jackal, he's back! And he made another Glenn! We meet up with Peter's clone, uh, who, no. who has the name Ben Riley, and he's working, again, so, somewhere in Mass. I don't know if it's Boston exactly, but somewhere in Mass. And he's a photographer, because the way Marvel clones work is, if you get a clone, they have all your memories before you were cloned. So, Ben Riley remembers being a photographer. Uh. So he's working as a photographer, and uh, Doc Ock is attacking like his city in Mass. And Doc Ock is like, ah, Peter Parker's clone. And he's like, how did you know? And he's like, I'll explain later. Grab the take. <laughs> so, uh, 
Also, Otto, after Otto goes after Ben Riley, he goes after Peter Parker, right? In Spider-Man, we see him here, another new costume. It's just got, like, kind of, like, more reinforcement, like, padding, kind of. Oh, I like that. Yeah. It's, a, it's like, a lot of the changes are subtle. So, Doc Ock, sh- he literally shows up, Otto Octavius is back, and I've got nothing to lose! <laughs> Except for the love of your dear art. <laughs> Correct this cheek. How is she doing, by the way? Yeah, she's she's doing. dead. Um, and yeah. Otto... He kidnaps Ben Riley. He kidnaps Peter. Peter wakes up in a lab. He's like, oh, where am I? He looks over at... He's like, I'm in a lab. Oh, no. And he looks over. Ben Riley's on the other table. Ben Riley, oh, no, my clone. He looks over. <laughs> Harry's in the corner of the room standing there with Norman o- or, uh, with Doc Ock. And uh, Peter's like, Harry Osborne and Doc Ock's but oh, no. So because we're talking about the clone saga, Seth said, I can't, I can't, I can't do it again. Yeah. yeah. So, it was actually just a clone. Yeah, actually. Yeah. So, I, I knew it right off the bat. I didn't say anything about it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Harry's in the room, and Harry's like, I'm sorry, Peter, he threatened my life, so he told him about the clones. He had my arm twisted, man, not really. Damn it, Harry. <laughs> you spineless man. I'm no. submissive. I'm submissive. <laughs> and Doc Ock is like, here's the thing. When your Aunt May died, uh, I took it really badly, because it means I'm going to die soon. I found out about the, about the clones, I, I talked to Harry about it, and... I decided, you know, this could be my chance. I could make a clone body for myself and put my brain into it. Or I could put my brain into one of your bodies and, like, be Spider-Man or something. Oh, that would be an interesting... There's some foreshadowing. That might be something. Uh, or I could clone your aunt and bring her back that way. And that way we could be together. And Peter's like, that's fucked up. <laughs> you're, you're crazy. So he's got the clones. He's like, and he's like, okay, so... I, and Doc is like, this is great, right? So I, I was looking at your, your clone science research stuff... And uh, I found something kind of weird that Miles Warren, like, he, he got his data wrong. Doc Ock is like, here's the thing. Peter, you're the clone. Ben Riley, you're the original Peter. <laughs> because, again, this is something they did in the 90s. Part of the clone saga was that reveal that Peter was, like, the clone. And uh, both of them are freaking out about it. Uh, Harry feels really bad and lets them both out of their bindings. Mm-hmm. And, like... Ben Riley is mad at Peter. He's like, you stole my life. Like, I'm the real Peter, and, and I've been letting you live in my shoes this whole time. And, and so he's attacking him. And, the, and, um, and Doc Ock is like, oh, God, they're, this is really annoying because there's two of them. I didn't, I didn't plan for this. Yeah, he's like, I didn't realize I that. I thought they were going to take the news better. Yeah, as if one Spider-Man wasn't bad enough. I'll, and Doc Ock is like, you know what? I'll get all the research I need from your corpses. So he tries to attack them. And, uh... Peter, I'm still going to call Peter Peter and Ben Ben. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben 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 Ben. Uh, Peter's going to get hit by a tentacle. Harry jumps in the way and, like, sacrifices himself to save Peter. Damn. Because also in the 90s, Harry Osborn had died, and it was a really sad issue. So we're referencing that here. Hmm. So Harry dies for his friend. He's like, I did it. I was a hero, even though I sold you out. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. And uh, Doc Hawk is like, oh. Crawls out the window. Uh, <laughs> crawls out the window. Ben tries to go after him, but he doesn't have shoot web shooters. So yeah. Peter has to save Ben Riley, and then like they're alone on a rooftop, and Ben Riley's like, I don't know what to do. Like I, I'm, I'm the real Peter. And you're not, and like he's gone, and, and Harry's dead, and Harry was my friend. I never got to really meet him because I thought I was the clone. And Peter's like, Okay, listen, Ben, Ben Riley, listen, listen to me right now. Listen. Listen to me. <laughs> you get it together. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> he's like. You're Peter Parker now, right? So here are the keys. Here are all the passwords. All the you know. Here's the company. Here's the Spider-Man license and shit. Like you get it all. You're Peter Parker. You're Spider-Man. You're, there you go, man. You, you get all of it. This I'm, is a soft reboot. You deserve all this. I'm going away. <laughs> and, and Ben is like, I don't know how to run a company. <laughs> I'm on vacation. So, so yeah, Peter's like, you're right. You're the real Peter. So you get all this stuff. It's you now, okay? So here, take it. And he goes to leave, and Ben Riley's like, wait. And he pulls out, like, a, like another Spider-Man mask. And he says, like, when I was a, a photographer, I, I couldn't stop myself from trying to be Spider-Man every now and again. Mm-hmm. So he gives Peter the spare mask in case, in case he ever needs it. So Peter's like, okay, I'm going to leave town because I have nothing left here in New York. Yeah. So, But there's a couple things I have to do first. First, he gets a phone call from Jessica Jones. And Jessica Jones is like, hey, I tried looking for you, because like, like, he was, like, captured by Doc Ock for, like, maybe, like, a day. Hmm. And Jessica Jones, like, made calls, she looked around, she couldn't find Peter. She was freaking out in sort of a PTSD sort of way, so she was like, this is why I don't, like, 
date people. Like, I, you and I are done, Peter. Like, I'm, I'm done with you. Jesus. So he gets dumped over the phone. And he's like, alright, whatever. I still have nothing to do. <laughs> Two. He goes to this biker bar. And he walks in. And, you know, one of the bikers is like, you don't belong here, Slim Jim. And Peter just twists the guy's arm. And he's like, oh! oh damn. <laughs> Peter goes into the back room. Because nobody stops him. And he goes down some stairs. And there's, like, a little studio apartment with, like, a fireplace and, like, a, like a bookshop and stuff. Under a bar? Yeah, under this, like, biker bar. Huh. And living down there... Gotta be super old is Norman Osborne. Oh. Peter's like, no, listen, you old man. Okay, I know you're the one that told Doctor Octopus about the clones, and sent him on this way. All right. Damn. I also know that you faked those test results. I know I'm the real Peter Parker, and that Ben is still the clone. Same. I know all that because I did the research myself. I after I found out I had a clone, I tested myself every couple of years with new technology. I know I'm the real guy. Same. <laughs> and it's like, it's such a good reveal, because again, it's like, this Peter is smarter than, than he would have been, because yeah. he, he has experience and age. Yeah. But it's also like, this Peter's still kind of shitty, because he knew he wasn't the clone, and he let Ben think that he was the real Peter, just so Peter didn't have to like live his life anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it does seem a little out of character for Peter, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, the thing is, this Peter... Everything he wants, he can't have because of the company and the Spider-Man yeah. in New York. Like, all he wants is an organ. And he can't, like, he doesn't think he can get there that way. Yeah. yeah. But he sees this as an opportunity to give Ben... Because if he tells Ben Riley, actually, you're the clone, it's going to break his heart even more. Yeah. And he, and he thinks Ben Riley probably has more... Like, Ben Riley, even though he's a clone and stuff, he doesn't have all the trauma that Peter has. Like, yeah. this Ben Riley has, like, a portion of, of Peter's life. But then, like, you know... Harry dying, uh, the Gwen clone thing, like, all the yeah. stuff that dragged Peter down, Ben Riley doesn't have. Yeah. So, he's saying this stuff to Norman, he's like, I know this, I know that, like, I know, I, I'm smarter than you ever gave me credit for. And Norman just cracks a little old man, so he's like, clever boy. So yeah, he's like, uh, Peter, you, you got me, you know, and Peter's like, I was just gonna let you live here and be an old man and then just die alone here. But, you know, you keep trying to kill me and mess up my life, so I'm taking you to jail. And, oh, because the thing that sends Norman over the tipping point, because, you know, Peter says, like, I know you lied about all this stuff, I'm taking you to jail, whatever. And Norman's like, okay, no, you see, here's the thing, though, you know, it seems like Tony Stark's having a real hard time buying your company, Peter, but I know Harry has some stocks, maybe I'll see if he can sell your company. Uh... And, and Peter's like, oh my god, you don't even know that your son is dead. Your son is dead because the guy that you tipped off killed him. Same. That's what sends Norman over the over the border, and he like presses the button. Goblin glider comes down. Say that behind. to my gliding friend. And Peter catches the the glider and like crumbles it in his hand like tissue paper. Bam. And he's like, "It's over. We're done. Like, there's no more tricks. No more pumpkin bombs and gliders. Like, we're done. You're over. It's done." And and Norman Osborn stands triumphantly. He's like, "It'll never be over, Peter." And then as he has, long as I live. And then he has a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he has his heart attack. He's dying. He's like shaking. He's dying. And Peter's holding him. And uh, Norman's like, "I hate you." <laughs> and then he dies. And he's dead forever. Damn. So, it's the 2000s! I'm blue, yabbity, yabbity. Age? <laughs> he's like in his 50s. Okay. He's okay. got a beard, he's chopping wood in the backyard. Oh, God. Because he lives in Oregon with his right. wife and his kids. Yeah. And his... they chop wood over there. Yeah. Uh, what is it? So, yeah, Peter's living in Portland with his family. His kids are teenagers now. Um, and he works as, like, an electrician. Um, we learn in, in these flashbacks that, like, this old guy named Ezekiel came to Peter's house... And told him there was, like, an energy vampire named Morlun cat coming after him. And Peter was like, you crazy old man, get out of here and shut the door on him. This one guy just gives him, like, an ominous warning. <laughs> yeah, and this old guy... This dips. This old guy, Ezekiel, came by because he's like, hey, I'm Ezekiel. I have spider, I have spider powers like you. Uh, but my powers were given to me by the spider god. And I'm assuming your powers are from the spider god. And Peter's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah sure. Yeah. Peter's uh, like, you, you <laughs> stupid old man. There's no spider god. I got my powers from a radioactive spider. You mean to tell me I'm that... I'm a normal spider. <laughs> there's more gods than just Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> In another flashback, we learn that... So Claire knows that her dad is Spider-Man. Or at least used to be. Yeah. Because when September 11th happened... Oh, shit. 
there was two <laughs> Spider Man Spider Man cleaning up in New York, and one of them was wearing civilian clothes and like a red Spider Man mask, and like she could tell that that was her dad, and she kind of like you know she's a teenager, so she's like, oh dad, you're so lame. But then she finds out he's Spider Man. She's like, dad, you're so lame because you won't keep being Spider Man. You're lame, but in a different kind of way. Yeah. So, you know, uh, Peter is like, he sees a news story because uh, <laughs> there's another news, there's a lot of news stories in, in the, the tw- in the 2000s because that's when, like, people start getting glued to watching the news on TV. Mm-hmm. And there's this story about how Parker Industries president, Peter Parker, uh, was found dead in a Spider-Man costume. What the? Yeah. And, like, the, the on-the-street report, because it's footage of how he died, he was killed by Morlun, this energy vampire motherfucker. And um, Peter's like, oh, my God, that old man. Was... So Peter's plan is pretty good, right? He goes to New York. First he goes to the, the news, and he's like, all right, here's the deal, right? That guy wasn't the real Peter Parker. I'm the real Peter Parker. He was a clone. Whole thing with Miles. He explains everything, and they believe it. Listen, listen. Sit down. I'm going to tell you... How my whole life got turned upside down. <laughs> okay, yeah. Here he goes back to Parker Industries, and Tony Stark is there. Because at this point in time, Tony Stark is the Secretary of Defense, and the actual Marvel Civil War is happening. He's got the Superhuman Registration Act up and running. And, you know, Captain America and the rest of those guys are on the run. Hmm. So when Tony is, like, there, he's like, there's Peter. Hey. Classic. So your identity's revealed. Your company's basically crumbling under... I'm guessing you're just going to, like, call... You know, you know, I knew you'd come crawling back, basically. It's Spider-Man pun. <laughs> yeah, just for you. That was free charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Peter's like, Tony, this isn't this isn't about you. And, the, and he's like, listen, you still have a chance, right? Sign the Superior Registration Act, come work for me, and I'll buy your company, and I'll work out just fine. And Peter's like, no. And so Tony's like, fine, then I'll call in my Avengers. And it's like, <laughs> She-Hulk, Captain Marvel and stuff, but they have their own Iron Man armors. Oh, uh, because they don't have their own set of strengths. Branding. You know? Yeah. Branding. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. the company uniform. Yeah. <laughs> I, I put on my armor one leg at a time. There's a dress code. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he's like, how are you going to fight against all of us iron armored, you know, superheroes and stuff? And Peter's like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to fight any of you. And this is part of his plan because wherever, the, like, he shows up, Iron Man and his team show up. And then Captain America and his Rebel Alliance oh. show up. Uh, yeah, Captain America's side shows up and they're like, ah, it's a war! And they fight. And Peter's like, just sitting back and watching. Because his plan is, if Morlun comes after me, all these real superheroes will come kick his ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cut to Morlun. The man of inaction. MJ opens the door, yes. Oh, God! <laughs> and eventually Peter, like, helps by, like, he's really smart, obviously. So he does some hacking. And he discovers... I mean. I'm in. He discovers all these Iron Man armors have, like, a protocol to, like, lock up. So he activates that. And when they're all locked up, he's like, here's the thing. All of you shouldn't work for Tony. He put these in your suits so that if you ever turned against him, he could just betray you and lock you up. Huh. And she yells on the ground like, hey, you're right. <laughs> what, a, what the? Stiff as a board. Um, and then the heroes go to attack Tony, and they pin him. And it, it, he reveals that, like, when he showed up, he was a hologram, and the suit's running on, like, um, autopilot. And he's like, of course I'm not there. I'm a politician. I'm not going to get involved that way. Oh, my God. And Yo. So, <laughs> so, Fuck Iron Man. <laughs> so, Captain America's like, all right, we got to get out of here. Peter, do you want us to, like, drop you off in Oregon? And he's like, yeah, that would be really helpful. And uh, I should tell you, Cap, like... If you're going to help me, I'm being chased by an energy vampire. So, like, uh, Cap is like, oh, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll, we'll handle it, son. And Peter goes, son, Cap, we're both really old. Cap is like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so, meanwhile, uh, Morlun is chasing Peter's family around the house. It's like ah! a, one of those slapstick bit things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, eventually it gets into, like, the backyard because, you know, Peter might not be there, but both of his kids have Spider-Man powers. So Morlun's gonna eat them. What? So he goes to absorb uh, Peter's son's powers, and while Morlun is distracted, Claire just takes him and like spikes him on top of like a broken tree branch or something. Like a, like the way Logan dies. Such like yeah. Oh Jesus. Yeah, Morlun's like, oh, but I didn't get to do the, the Spider Verse stuff. This is from that movie. <laughs> He's like, no. Oh, did you kill him with a tree? That sucks! Uh, he dies. I guess the bark really is as worse as the bite. 
<laughs> so Claire was able to kill Morlun. The only downside is uh, the son, Ben. He doesn't have his powers anymore. He lost his powers. And oh, no. when we see him later, he's walking around with a crutch. Peter, like, after the Morlun thing, he helps kind of settle the civil war between Cap and Tony. Yeah. Ah, oh, my leg. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I was expecting. we get the final issue, which is in the 2010s. Peter's mm. old. He's really <laughs> old. Man. Old man. His spider costume comes with a little walker. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's going spider to... Spider walker? He's going to space, guys. Oh, oh shit. Is it the Infinity War? No. No, we're done with the wars. Shit. Because we already lost the war. No. So, at this point in time, Doctor Doom and all the villains have teamed up and basically took over the world. Huh. And Doctor Doom has this satellite in the sky that releases an energy pulse. And it, like, basically, Peter's on a space mission to destroy that satellite. Uh, he's kissing uh, MJ goodbye as he goes on this big mission. Uh, also, like, again, his son is there like a walking stick, and his daughter Claire is a uh, spider girl. Like she has her own costume and stuff. Oh. Yeah. Also there with him is Miles Morales. Wait. Miles and Peter put on their Spider-Man themed space costumes. Nice. Oh, they have clear eye holes. Now. Yeah. Clear eyes. That's the only difference. <laughs> <laughs> space parts and shit. <laughs> and they go to space. They go and they fly this ship up to Doom Satellite. So Peter and Miles, they go up to the space base. And they're, you know, trying to turn things off. And they notice out the window, that their ship is destroyed. Like, they, they parked, get on the satellite, doo -doo 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 -doo, look out the window, mm. our ride is destroyed. We're stuck up here now. Oh. And Peter's like, the hell? And, like, this is a better... Okay, so I'm going to show you two things. One of them is Spider-Man's suit. It's, like, a better view of it. Yeah. And the other one is Venom, who shows up. And, again, it's Craven Venom. So, here you go. Oh! <laughs> He's just Venom with hair. Venom with hair. He's like, I told you... I told you I'd hunt you to the ends of the earth. And so they're, they're fighting each other. Never would I have thought to hunt you in Oregon. <laughs> or in orbit, apparently. <laughs> they're fighting. He's fighting Peter. And then Miles gets involved. He's like, I'm younger and stronger. And he fights him. And Venom like grabs Miles' head. And he's like, now that I got you, I'll use my powers to possess you. And, and oh. Oh. Okay, never mind. And he puts Miles down. And he pats him on the head. And he goes back to fighting Peter. But, uh. Because Venom is like, he grabbed Miles and he was like, ah, well done, old friend. And we don't know what that means. And uh, he puts Miles down and then Peter's like... What'd you do, what'd you do there? Yeah, <laughs> Peter's like, Craven, you don't have any friends. And he uses this sonic bracelet on his arm to like obliterate Venom. And we see that Craven isn't in the suit. His skeleton was. Craven oh, died a long time ago and Venom was puppeteering Damn. Craven's body. That's kind of cool. And Miles is like, oh, he was just like a skeleton or something. <laughs> and uh, Peter's like, that's right. All my enemies are dead. Isn't that right, Otto? <laughs> yeah, because throughout this, Miles had been referring to Peter as Parker. He'd been using kind of like like old lingo. Like It was very clear mm -hmm. that Miles wasn't himself. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, in a superior Spider-Man-esque twist, Otto Octavius possessed Miles Morales' body. Hmm. So Miles is the superior Spider-Man in this. Hmm. And I have no idea how Otto does this. He's like, I could beat you with this body. Right? I, could, I could destroy you with these powers. But I'm going to defeat you in the only place that matters. In my mind. And I, I think he uses some kind of technology to do this. But like he headbutts Peter. And they both end up in the mind escape. The void. The what void. The which means, you know, the artist gets to take a break for a little while. Yeah. yeah. Yay, no backgrounds. <laughs> That's when Otto unleashes, like, his the Sinister, sinister six. six. But it's in the mind. Yeah, it's Green Goblin, Venom. It's funny, because it's like, Venom and Green Goblin. Okay, I get that. They've been in the book. Mm -hmm. Electro, Rhino, and Vulture are just here now. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't have done, like, Craven or Morlon. Venom. Like, like villains who had shown up already. Yeah. I don't know. No. And Peter goes, Same. you and what army? And then Peter summons all the versions of him throughout oh, the book in all their costumes. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's a really cool moment. Otto is losing until he's like, wait, it's the mindscape. I'll just make myself young and big. And so he grows giant. <laughs> <laughs> what now? What now, Peter, huh? What stupid tricks do you have now, huh? Anything? You remember that bit in Vietnam where <laughs> that guy grew giant? Yeah. Yeah, me now. Yeah, yeah that's, that's him but me. So Otto's like, what's your plan now, Peter? How am I going to beat me? And Peter's like, 
I summon Aunt May to the field. Oh, shit. So the memory of Aunt May shows up. You were always so angry at the future. I loved you, Otto, but you could never accept the world around you or our limitations. It's just not fair, May. It's not fair that you're gone and, and I'm still here and I'm, I'm, I'm on a deathbed somewhere. And, uh, and May is like, Otto, what's not fair is taking a young man's life just so you can correct your mistakes. You were never at a competition with Peter for my love. Like, there is no limit on love. Aww. And then Otto's like, okay, and he puffs away into smoke. And Peter's like, wow, you know, I've never defeated my enemy with a hug before. That was pretty crazy. Like, Aunt May is like, that's the thing, Peter. Like, people will always fight for what they want, even if they know they, they can never have it. And Peter's like, well, then what do I want? And she's like, you want what you've always wanted, Peter. You, you want to save your Uncle Ben, but you can't do that. So you're gonna so have you just save other people just to fill that void. Well, I may come down. <laughs> Wait. She goes, You want to save Ben, but you can't, so you save everyone else. Like that's the next best thing. So Pete he comes out of the mindscape, Peter grabs Miles, uh, who's still Otto's still in Miles. Oh. Yeah. But like he's unconscious. So Peter is like bringing Miles to the escape pods, and there's only room for one. Peter's like of course there's only room for one. There's all there's always only one parachute. <laughs> Locks it. And Otto had woken up by that point. And Otto as Miles is like, No, Parker, let me help. We we can stop this. We can save everyone. And Peter's like, Otto, you wanna save someone? You wanna do something good? Go back home and give Miles his his body back. And now Peter's alone in this space station. And the idea is that he can't let the space station fall apart until like the virus like uploaded fully goes out. Because if the base blows up before the virus is gone, like it's, like, synced up to other satellites. Mm -hmm. So he needs to hold it together until the virus is completely, like, settled. Mm -hmm. So just like Spider-Man always does, he, like, shoots webs and he's holding it all together. Like, like he does with the boat and then, and then, and then he does it, with the train. And then the, yeah. in the movie with the train and, and everything. Yeah, 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 it's like that, but it's in space. So <laughs> it was in space, so it's cool. Um, and, like, the, the, the part of the satellite opens so the vacuum space is there so he doesn't have air. He's like, no, I'm so close. Like, it's only 40 seconds. I'm, I'm, I almost got it. And then the Venom suit returns to seal up the hole. Because oh. it still loves Peter Parker. Oh, that's nice. Aww. Yeah. And, two bros. Yeah, and it's nice, too, because in a way, <laughs> in a way, like, the, the Venom suit never wanted to be alone. And now neither the suit or Peter will die alone. Aww. Aww. So as really? Peter's dying, he's imagining MJ, and they're talking. And he calls MJ his jackpot because of a classic line that yeah. MJ says to Peter. Face when they first it, Tiger, you hit, hit the jackpot. jackpot. <laughs> yeah. So he dies smiling, knowing that he did the right thing. So we cut a little bit later uh, to like around the same time. It's like the time of uh, Peter's funeral, and after the funeral, Miles went to visit Doctor Octopus, who's like in like an iron lung, basically. Mm. The last iron lung ever <laughs> is for Doc Doc. <laughs> Saved it just for him. And, uh, and, and Miles is saying to Otto, he's like, you know, Peter died and, and you're still here. And after I got my body back, I really thought about killing you. Like, for, like all the years you took from me, all the people whose, you know, lives you affected by using me. Like, I, I, you messed up my whole life and I really thought about coming here and killing you. But then I, I keep thinking about Peter and the things that he taught me. And I realized, like... Killing you would be letting you off the hook. You'd be with Aunt May. You'd be free. Like, I think there's no better punishment than for you to be stuck here, unable to die, but unable to live. Mm -hmm. So goodbye. It's symbolic, man. You're in like a stasis. And Miles shit. climbs out a window and leaves. Um, <laughs> so Miles is talking to, to MJ, and of course MJ's, you know, old like Peter was. And uh, Miles is like, I just don't know what to do with my life now. And MJ is like, listen... Listen, Miles, I used to know a boy a lot like you who every time his life would fall apart... Uh, he'd just he'd, run. He'd, he'd run away. He'd, he'd run away. <laughs> <laughs> he'd run away and, you know... Like, he, a, little, like a little chicken shit. Is that you? <laughs> a coward. He's, He's like... gonna run away, you freak. <laughs> MJ is <laughs> like, Miles, I think what you need is a fresh start. MJ gives Miles the original Spider-Man costume. Uh -huh. And the last bit we see is... Like, it, we, it is like the origin for Peter. Because when this chapter started, he was telling MJ he was having this reoccurring dream of the night he let the robber go. I mean, the robber that ended up killing Ben. Mm. Um, but at the end of the chapter, we see that Peter's afterlife is that moment again. The robber runs by, Peter lets him go, 
But now, in his heaven, he stops the robber. Hmm. Um, but as it stands, this is Spider-Man life story. This is, like, my favorite uh, Spider-Man story. Yeah. You know, I, I love the way it, like, uses actual Spider-Man history in new and different ways. You, you get a lot of the stuff that had happened. You also get, like, twists. Like, Harry Osborn in a new Goblin costume. Venom Craven, you know. Uh, yeah. Like, auto-possessing Miles instead of Peter, you know. And I think those twists make it really entertaining. Um, what, what did you think, uh, David? I, I really liked it. Um, it was, like, a fresh perspective on, like, an already beaten horse kind of story. Yeah. But I also, unironically, really liked the um, Clone Saga, too. It, mm. was, it wasn't it was horribly done. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is, like, the best version of the Clone Saga <laughs> they've done. It's it like, wasn't, like... <laughs> torturous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what did you think, Marina? I, I really liked the, like, how much, how he's such, like, a realistic character. Mm -hmm. And even, like, with the, with the clone thing, when he found out that, like, well, he didn't find out, but he knew that he was the actual one, but yeah. gave it away. It was, like, a realistic move. Like, his life is kind of shit. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, like, right. I mean, like, I feel like if anyone was given that opportunity, a lot of people would take it. Yeah. So, like, I think it's realistic. Yeah. Um, but and then it's all, he's also likable because he knows he goes back and he helps and it's like... Yeah, and it's like, it's totally within Peter's character to be like, yeah. I'm going to do something that benefits me and gets, like, a, a load off my back, yeah. but I'm going yeah. to rationalize it as helping out Ben and right. giving him something to do. I really like the... Weirdly enough, I like the Morlun era. Yeah, with I, the inheritors. I think it's just because it's, like, it's satisfying to see Spider-Man, like, in a position where it's, like, he's in, like, the Civil War, but he's not, like, under anyone's thumb. Right. You know, he yeah. you know, he's yeah. given Tony shit. He's, you know, not exactly on because Cap's side for the whole thing. He's got a family. He's got stuff going on already. Yeah. He doesn't need to be in this war. But yeah, because... it's a super good book. Uh, the art is amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, hmm. Thank you guys so much for sitting in with me for this. Yeah, no problem. Uh, oh, oh, Seth, what did you think? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I think they're really cool. <laughs> Goblins, yeah. Oh, yeah, I really like the part with, um... He's being watched. Uh, he's being watched. <laughs> Oops, I pooped myself. Oh, Seth. Oh, uh, classic myself. Seth. Uh, Poopy. <laughs> uh, as always, thank you all for listening so much. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And we'll catch you guys next time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.